Ethan Sperlin. I'm not loaded, but my dad is. Yeah. And you been Hi, my name Hi my Hi, my name is Dennis Berlin. I'm not a lawyer, but my daddy is. Yeah. If you been were in a car accident, call my daddy. No need to scream and yell like a little kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My daddy will fight for your rights. Yeah, fight for your rights. If you been involved in a car accident, call my daddy returning Dennis Berlin. Hello, I'm attorney Dennis Berlin. You've been injured in a car wreck? Call me, 713-229-0770. Call my daddy, daughter, daddy. What up, what up? Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome to the broadcast. Y'all make sure y'all hit the number one button. Let me know you can hear me, baby. <laughs> it is always good to be here. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. I want to give a big shout out to Dusty Nuts. That's D U S T T Nuts. I love that name, man. He said, Dennis, this is the real Dennis the Menace. He's going to come out. Gate being an a-hole tonight. <laughs> hey, man, you know, I'm just out here doing the Lord's work, man. I just want a big, big shout out to everybody who's been following me on the page, who's been here for a while. Basically, what's going on is there's a lot, a lot of people out there saying a lot of horrible things about folks um, that they don't know, people that they, they don't, they don't know anything about them. Um, and it's just being broadcast all over the internets. And here's the thing. It's coming from a certain group of people within our community. And, you know, unfortunately, since the rise of social media, any idiot can get on the internet and say something crazy. And then that can reflect upon all of the people. What am I talking about? Well, these lovely African-American ladies that we love and treasure so dearly have discovered that black, they recently discovered that black men, not just black men, but all men, but specifically black men are traveling overseas. And not only are they traveling overseas, but they're having a good time. They are finding themselves involved and in love with the different countries and the cultures and the women and the food, and the people, and the lifestyle, and it's easy to do, okay? I myself am a victim, okay? I myself have become 
a passport husband. I originally planned to marry some American woman and stay here forever and die unhappy. No, I'm just kidding, not unhappy. <laughs> but either way, I plan just like the rest of you guys. What is the American dream? Go to job, uh, uh, go to school, get a job, pay your bills, find a wife, you know, gain 50 pounds, uh, get two, two and a half kids, a cat, a dog, and, uh, you know, wait for Social Security. And I pretty much thought that was it. It wasn't until after my first my first and only divorce that I uh, began to travel. The first couple of places I went after my divorce, I went to Jamaica, I went to the DR. And when I got to the DR, I knew then there was something special about it. And I just, ever since that time, you know, I've continued to go back. I love the people, I enjoy the people. It's a really, it's a place where I go and I can unwind. And see, the thing is, not only do I go, but I also take my children now. Um, a typical day for me with my kids in the DR, uh, we may go up to uh, some of the different uh, natural sites. Like this is us at, I forget the name. I, it's called 27 Waterfalls. It's outside of Puerto Plata. Uh, and uh, we you basically jump off of cliffs and, <laughs> into pools of water. Uh, there's a, another place we like to go. This is where we ride go-karts. This is somewhere between um, uh, Porta Plata and Sasua or Cabarete. Um, when, and, and, you know, it, it just stuff that you don't really even get a chance to do here in the United States because you have so much to do. But look at those smiles, right? Horseback riding with my sons. You see, I mean, things that I've never done here in the United States. So much so, I've become so involved in the community down there that we've made friends. They are members of a, a, a Shotokan uh, karate club in Puerto Plata, Dominican Republic. We've traveled all over. The boys, you can tell by these smiles. Look at these missing teeth smiles right here. These two little brown coconuts right here. They look like they're having a great time. As you see, they've been going for a long time, hanging out in the pool, uh, just living their best life. You know, these are all recent pictures for the most part, either last summer, summer before last. Um, just making friends. You see, these are my sons. My boys went down there. This is, I believe, their first year joining the karate, and they fought hard. They fought well, and uh, you know, they, you know, they made sure they were tough. But after that, they actually gave these two boys of mine awards for how tough they are. Now, for the for the most part, me, this is pretty much what I like to do when I'm in the DR. You see that? I got my drink. I'm looking at the sunset. This is actually an apartment that I rented uh, from the guests here tonight. And I would sit out there and that was literally my backyard. Uh, so from about 20, I would say from about 2017, 2018, this is what I did every evening. You know, the practice of the law wears on you, life wears on you. And uh, for the most part, I had a great, great time just doing that. Then, well, you know, uh, I, one of those Dominican women got me <laughs> and here I am engaged again. She's been, you know, she's got me and the family. This is some years back. Uh, this is one of the houses that, uh, you know, was in our neighborhood. This was a typical meal, you know, that I would eat in the morning. Um, and, uh, you know, this is her hanging out, getting her nails done by uh, a lady that, that we just basically become like a family member. So for the most part, what I'm telling you guys is that there's a lot going on down there. And for people to disrespect these folks, this country is Here's some more video. These are my boys out. We're about to go snorkeling. This is them actually dropping in the water, snorkeling here. Um, you know, beautiful country. Some things you guys, those of you who follow my pages, you know, I, I try to keep my boys pretty active. Uh, there's a baseball team in Sasua. My boys join that team. And uh, every summer when they go down, they play ball. And as I said before, they also are members of the uh, uh, this certain karate club to teach the Shotokan. And more importantly, I taught my sons that they should immerse themselves in the culture of, 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 of the people, you see? And so what you see going on right here is this young lady is teaching my son how to dance. And this is actually a father celebrating where, uh, you know, 
boys out there just somewhere up in, in Sasua Short, and they're dancing and, and just enjoying themselves just like normal kids used to back in the day. And so here's what I'm saying, family. When you hear people tell you that, uh, you know, when they make all these xenophobic, horrible statements about folks' as countries and, and, and places, a lot of them from the place of jealousy. Just That's just the reality of it. They're jealous. They're angry. Um, many can't do it themselves. But um, what I want to do, what I'm doing on this page all week is dispelling some of those myths. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce a good friend of mine, a colleague, a fellow member of the bar, attorney Jeanette Garcia. Buenas noches, senora. Como esta? How are you today? <laughs> I know you speak multiple languages, but let's just focus on English today. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome, sen senora. How are you today, this evening? I'm very well. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's a pleasure to share again with you this space and uh, to, you know, <laughs> go on with uh, our discussion for tonight. I'm happy to be here. So, th and, th and I'm honored to have you here. For you guys who don't know, this is really, this is my attorney. She is the lady that when I have business going on in the Dominican Republic, whether it be something as small as renting a new uh, house or apartment or villa, or even starting my corporation that I have down there, which is a sister corporation to my company here, um, I will run it by Jeanette. I will run it by Senora Garcia. Uh, she has an active law practice in Cabarete, which is, um, I would say, between on the other side of Sasua, Puerto Plata, then Sasua, then Cabarete. Many of you guys who frequent the DR, you probably pass by her uh, her office building all the time, but she has places all over. In, in the north and in uh, on uh, in the north coast and in the DR, but um, here's the thing: if you will, um, just tell us. And I and, and I I'm gonna catch you off guard because I'm not gonna ask you a whole bunch of legal questions. I will <laughs> later, but about the culture of the Dominican Republic, like tell us, you know, and you've lived in the U.S. and, and your husband's a lawyer too. Your son's a lawyer. Um, and you're Afro, you're Dominican, but they would call you Afro Latina, but yeah. you know, because you understand your heritage. Tell us, I mean, just, just tell us those who know nothing about the Dominican Republic, tell us about your culture, tell us about your people. Well, uh, the Dominican Republic is a precious island, it's one of the big Antilles, and uh, it is a beautiful island. We share the island with Haiti. Um, we are a mix you know, a, a mix of, uh, of nationalities because culturally it was initially um, the, by the Spanish uh, influence. And then of course we have the African influence as well, also French. So there's a lot of mixed generations there and a lot of mixed culture and that makes us very special. Mm -hmm. One of the main things that I love the most about Dominican Republic is the people and that's that's the biggest asset, and that's what everyone excels um, when they go to Dominican Republic. They, the people are welcoming, they're warming, they're charming, they're smart, they're hard workers. Yeah. In in all the generations, they will, you know, they will always run the extra mile because that's how we've been raised to do. That's what we've been raised to do: to give, to be welcoming. To I remember my family. In my family. You know, my family is huge, but there's always space for an extra person to welcome. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where you come from. We will always have open arms for anyone. And that's something ingrained in the culture. Everywhere you go around the island, you will receive that. You know, one of the anecdotes that I always say is when I was driving through the mountains, I my car broke down. Mm. If it was here in the United States, I would be like super scared because right. nobody will stop. In Dominican Republic, my car broke down in the middle of the night. It was in the mountains. I'm sure you know that yeah. mountain road. And I just got outside. I was with my son. He was like about seven years old. And he was not scared either. And you don't imagine how many people came out in the middle of the night without knowing me to help me and offer us food, offer us is, is the nature of the Dominican. So in Dominican Republic, no matter where I am, I feel safe. I feel embraced by the people and by the culture it's a beautiful place to be mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i will recommend it 
And, you know, as you mentioned before, maybe the American dream was to live the life, but <laughs> right. you don't know what you're missing. People, yeah. guys and women, ladies and gentlemen, you don't know what you're missing. The real life is in, it's in paradise. It's over there. It, it, it truly is. You mentioned something about, uh, and they are, they are, they love you in the chat, the uh, chat room. She's married. First of all, let's establish <laughs> that. She's married and she got a whole grown son. That's a lawyer. Okay. So she is too mature for you people <laughs> out here. Listen, all right? put your thirsty cups back down. <laughs> You're not getting nothing. All right. She's <laughs> taken. Go down and find your own. But anyway, you mentioned something about how the Dominican people, you, you, your car broke down in the middle of the night on a mountain road. And I know that road is probably between, it's between Santiago, is Santiago and Puerto Plata. Yeah, I yes. know that road. I've been on that road many a night headed over to the house. But um, the thing is, it, 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 it's, it's almost like the people of the Dominican Republic, like, there's a certain national pride. Like we're all Dominican. That's what you all say. Like we're all Dominican. It's like, yeah, in America you have white and then amongst the white people, you got Italian, Irish, Polish, Russian, English, Scottish, uh, black people. We got black people from the Caribbean, black people from Africa. Then the Africans got, I'm from Nigeria. You're from Uganda. But in the Dominican Republic, it's like we're all one group. We're all one exactly. people. So you stick together. Can you explain to them about the national pride that people from the Dominican Republic have and how they love their country and how they appreciate people who respect their country? Yes, I think it's, it's ingrained, as I said. People are proud to be Dominican. I don't know if you've seen there's a commercial about the baseball competition, you know, mm -hmm. the, the baseball cup who, that is happening now. And the main issue, the main aspect of the of the baseball promotion is how Dominican we are. And they said, you know, they call it the platano power, the plantain, oh. which is our one of our main meals. <laughs> right, we're going right. to take them with the plant plantain power and we're going to yeah. show them how strong we are. So yeah. I, I encourage you to see that commercial. I'm going to send mm -hmm. it to you. And it's beautiful how, you know, the music they play with the drums. Um, it's something that comes uh, from, uh, from I think it's from the origins of the Dominican Republic. We mm -hmm. also have uh, native Indians because at, at that time when we when America was discovered, we had Tainos, which were the was the population there. So that makes I think it makes a beautiful blend of people who have the fears, the courageousness of the of the black. Mm -hmm. have the the tender of the of the indians of the natives and also the other cultures that mix in so mm -hmm. because we were merged with so many so many uh ethnicities mm -hmm. we are a blend and we embrace everybody there was never a discussion that you know you're not dominican or you're half dominican no there's everybody's mm -hmm. even if you go to dominican republic they will think you're dominican they will speak spanish to you Claro. Because we assume that everybody's from from our country, and we embrace yeah. whoever comes. We mm. embrace with uh, with love and and great respect as well. And you know, I think it's because of that so many people come all the time. Like, like okay, so here's the thing, and I want this is going to sound silly to you, but a lot of Black American women just realize that Black men have been going to the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. They just realized like six minutes, six months ago. Like, what do you mean? And they call them passport bros. Tell us, you, 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 you've worked in, in, on the North Coast for decades now. Uh, I know because I've been going back and forth for a decade, and you've been my lawyer for the most part of that. Tell, why are they surprised? I mean, how did they not know that the plane, <laughs> there's planes going every day full of brothers, going down to the DR. I mean, how did they not know that? <laughs> it is the best <laughs> secret in America. But what is it? You see what I do. You know, I have a good time. I bring my family. I bring my children. You've met them. You've met my fiance. In fact, y'all, Janet was the lawyer that helped get my uh, fiance her papers so that she can be a Dominican citizen because she was born in America, so she's not, but now she is. So guess what happens? Now, when we get married, Guess who gets to get his papers? How about who? I'll give you one guess. That'd be me. You know, and the other thing is, you know, you're a, you're an educated woman. I'm not gonna hold you all night, but I know I know my people. They like to know things. So you're this educated woman. You got these. You got your own law practice. You got people working for you. You have employees. Do you cook? Or are you like? Of course. Oh, yes. Oh, you do. You I so cook. You do. 
So you I make cook. time to cook. You make time. Yeah. What other things do you do? I mean, how do you, what do you say to women who say, do all Dominican women cook? Is I mean, explain, is that part of the culture? Yes, because this is what happens when we are raised in that. I think it, it comes all from the family foundation. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, despite whatever is out there said, Dominican Republic has a very strong family foundation, mm -hmm. family values, irrespectively of your social status. Even wow. if you're the poorest, you know, if you're humble or live in the campo in the countryside, the family values are ingrained. You know, whatever that human being that woman does afterwards it's the choice but what we are focused on is in the family values and the family values are first first of all is family is first your husband or wife is first or oh, and also education and i've seen it so many times you won't believe me the lady who used to be my helper at home mm. i help her as well but she focused on her son being educated so she worked she clean my, well, you know, I think you met her Sunni. She cooked, she cleaned. Yes. It was only to pay for her son's education. And her son mm. is now a doctor. Wow. So it's not that all the women, you know, there are different types, but the majority, it doesn't matter where you come from, is based on education and family values. And that's what makes us different, I think, uh, or special in a way. So your, your son's a lawyer and the lady yes. used to work for you. Her son is a doctor. Yes. Okay. So... I hope you all who are listening here, does she look like she needs any of you people? Does she look like she <laughs> need anybody a green card? Does she look like that? No. Does she looks like, they say you, you can't speak English. Okay. They said that's what these women in the Dominican Republic, they can't speak that's English. They want to, they, they, I know. How many languages do you speak? I speak English. I speak French and Spanish, of course. Parlez-vous français? Oui, je parle français très bien. Okay, that's all I know. I just know French fries, French toast. That's it. But uh, let's 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 talk a little bit more. Um, I want to know. Uh, so tell us about like people think. Oh, this this island is there's just a bunch of tropical forests there. Tell us about Santo Domingo. Tell us about the the, the El Capital, and well, tell us about the universities and the education system. Just just you know, free. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, well, tell us what we don't know. Santo Domingo is right now one of the, you know, strongest city in the Caribbean and most mm -hmm. popular and evolved. Yeah. Uh, it has, with the change of governments as well, it has influenced a lot the organization, not mm -hmm. only in the private areas, but all in the governmental departments. I can see the difference, especially in immigration, which is mm -hmm. something that I work. So it's very, it's very uh, open. Is you can find anything. I mean, before I used to say, "Well, I need to bring this to to Dominican," but you have all the franchises in Santo Domingo, yeah. all big buildings, malls, everything. I don't even have to bring anything from the United States because all the stores are there. The stores wow. that you find on the big malls um, here in the United States are found there. Education-wise, is one of the biggest. You know, I don't know if you're aware, but Santo Domingo was the first, the city of the Americas where mm. we have the first cathedral and the first university. So they want to keep that reputation. And Santo Domingo was the hub for the um, discovery of the other parts of America. Mm. And they're bringing that back. So we have the state university, which is the Universidad Autónoma, mm -hmm. where a lot of uh, beautiful professionals have formed. Uh, there's the Catholic University, that's where I went to school. Mm -hmm. uh, which is almost, uh, I think, uh, 50 years old or more. Okay. And that's where my son went to school as well. There's Universidad Iberoamericana, which is has also partnerships with Spain, France, and the United States, where you can do uh, parallel education. So in terms of education, it's, it's one of the top. And we oh. had great professionals. We have, uh, even at schools, I read the other day, there was a girl who won a prize to come to the States to learn robotics because wow. she that's what she was in, you know, willing to do. So, so through the government officials, she obtained a scholarship to mm -hmm. study in the United States robotics. So, you know, it's not a jungle. We have very educated people, <laughs> right, right, yeah. very renowned musicians, artists, Oh yeah. even movies, the movie uh, industry, it has mm -hmm. something that has been developed 
10 years because there's a new rule, a new law for, uh, for production, for filming production that gives mm -hmm. a lot of incentives like that too. And you know, the other thing is a lot of your musical influence in hip hop right now, some of the El Alpha, uh, yeah. Bad Bunny, a Bunny. lot of the, uh, all of them are getting their, their musical influence from the Dominican Republic. So, I mean, if you listen to it, and, and if you guys listen to my music, most of my, I'm going to be honest with you, most of the music that y'all hear Uncle D wrote that I put on my albums, I was drunk, writing on the beach. Mm -hmm. There's a beach over in uh, Puerto Plata. I forget what it's called right now. Uh, it's the one with the movie theater in there. Um, I forget El the name. Playa Dorada. Playa Dorada. I was sitting there <laughs> drunk, writing in my notepad, just leaning. <laughs> All the words are flowing out. It is. It has been like the best therapy that I've ever had. Just being stressed out for years. I had the money. I had everything that I wanted, but I just did not have any happiness. There's nothing like getting off that plane. I got my my taxi driver Umberto, who's my friend. This is birthday. Feast uh, feliz de cumpleaños de Umberto. Umberto's mm -hmm. my guy. Everybody who knows me around and knows Umberto, we've traveled all up through the mountains and whatnot. He knows my kids. He's like a Theo at this point. But, um, you know, it's just a great place to relax. And I just, you know what I really hate? I hate that all these Americans and gringos are coming to the DR, building all these buildings and messing it up. I, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I like the ruralness of it. I like being able to go to Cabarete and there not be some high rise. It's almost like they're trying to turn it into a Miami beach. How do you feel about that as a native Dominican? Um, you know, I especially with Cabarete, which I love very yeah. much because it's, yeah. it's my home. Um, I I'm very reluctant to that type of development. You yeah. know, it's it's very painful. I remember one time there were rumors that they were going to open a McDonald's or a Pizza Hut, and we oh, were like, no. no, we don't want this. We have the yeah. most amazing food. You've tasted the food at the beach; yes. it's just so gourmet because it has influence yeah. from everywhere. All the foreigners that have come from Europe have put little restaurants, and it's just mm -hmm. beautiful. It's great yeah. the taste, and so we don't want that. We don't. We want to keep our little bubble, you yeah. know, protected. Same with the natural resources. Yeah. Cabarete is known for the winds and every time they build a high rise it stops the wind so it deters the practice of windsurfing and surfing so yeah. we are against that in general I mean I mean I'm not against development but development has to be sustained respecting nature uh, yeah. respecting the um, the ecosystem and cabaret is an encode for beautiful sports and beautiful yeah. nature it's gorgeous it's naturally protected the water is always warm. It's beautiful. I have a great time. It's, it's one of my favorite places in the whole world. And like my fiance, you know, as I said, she's Dominican. She's like, why we don't go somewhere else? Let's go somewhere else. I'm like, ah, I'm good. I'm going to go back to, I love it. I love going, you know, and, um, and it, it, I'm be honest with you. It really, it hurts me that I have so many black American people saying not all black American people, but just the ones who don't know they're jealous. They're jealous of the women. Obviously, you have some beautiful women in the DR. Uh, there are beautiful women everywhere. But can you tell us, like, why is it that you have so many beautiful women in the DR? Like, what is it? Is it the diet? Is it, I mean, what is it, the water? What's going on? Talk. What, what is it? How do y'all stay so <laughs> slim? I think it's the genes and mm -hmm. the way, because in Dominican Republic, there's it's not such a comfort. You know, mm -hmm. you have to you have to work out even indirectly you have to walk you have to take the public transportation mm -hmm. the heat the food also is very unprocessed so mm -hmm. when i see for example organic food here i'm like that's what we eat out of the roots you know out uh, of the <laughs> trees like organic food we don't know we didn't know about that because that's what we eat in the countryside you know they get the chicken and they give you organic chicken <laughs> which right. i know it was organic you, you get you, food and that's what it is. You know, and Janet, like a lot of American women, they think cooking and taking care of the family and cleaning, they consider that, they equate that with slavery. They literally will tell you that being a wife is like being a slave. Like as a woman, as a traditional woman, uh, and, you, and clearly you put being a woman and being a wife and being a mother before you put 
your attorney. Like I put being a father before everything. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel to know that there are women in the world who think that being a mother and being a wife and serving your family is slavery? As a woman, how would you talk to another woman if you were talking to them right now? If I were talking to them, I would say that we, the women, are the guardians of a, of a generation. And mm -hmm. as a respectful guardian, we have to protect what we are creating. We're creating the next generation of human beings that can save or destroy this world. And I think that the most of the changes that we've seen with so much violence and you know, people being aggressive is, is because people have detached from that concept of mm. being the guardians. Remember that in ancient times, the societies were mainly ruled by women, were organized by women. And mm. that has eventually will come back because we know we are aware that we are such a, we are creators. We are the creators and we are the guardians. And by in, embracing who we are as a woman, I'm not saying, you know, being abused or, or anything like that, always with the balance with your partner or spouse. I think there's, there's a beautiful thing that co can come out of it. If you embrace it with, uh, with knowing that you are creating a new generation of people, of human beings that are founded by that, by those values. I believe in values. I believe that you need to, to transfer to the new generation, the values that where you were, you were raised with. And I, I, that's what I intend to do with, with my son. I'm not creating a macho man. Uh, I'm creating a person, a human being that is aware and that understands and, and knows what the value of a woman is. And you don't necessarily have to be a, you know, all one, all professional or all mother. Mm -hmm. There's a balance between the two. And that's what we all intend to do in this new group of uh, communities. You know, it's funny, you have a son. And so you might be biased and in favor towards men because you have a son. I, I, I noticed that women who have sons, they're able to see from the perspective of a man, of men. My, my question to you as a mother, when, you, when your son begins to date seriously and he may get married, what kind of woman do you want your son to marry? Like, what are the qualities of a woman that you would want your son to marry? Well, I'm lucky enough to see him with a very nice uh, lady that he's dating right now. And uh, he, he, she is what I wanted him for him to have. She's a very, she's also a professional. She's a lawyer as well. She's very mm -hmm. smart. She's very, she has those values that I've been talking about. So she, uh, cooks, and clean, she cooks and cleans too? Of course. Yes, she <laughs> does. She does. <laughs> she does. And she takes care of him. They're, they'll probably be married soon. And Dominican Republic, as you know, people, we get married really young because we mm -hmm. have, because we have those values. We want to yeah. form a family and continue. So yes. um, yeah, she cooks, she takes care of him. Every Sunday they meet and they have, uh, they, they have dinner or lunch at their, at their house, wow. at their family house. And they, they live a very family oriented life you know with her parents and her brothers and you know she's she's very beautiful girl she's very smart and very uh grounded too and how in your interactions with her does she does she defer to you because you're la la let me see como se dice la jefa la suegra. <laughs> la suegra, okay, okay. we treat each other both of we treat each other with respect we we have a very good relationship like mm -hmm. every day we'll share music we share a song. Wow. I say the song of the day. We share the song, wow. and she's very respectful. She's very sweet, and of course, she she uh, she honors me as I honor her and respect her because she's a she's beautiful and and a professional like me. So we have wow. a very good relationship. And that that's what I want for these ones I got. You see, I bring them down there every summer to try to. I need y'all to find one of these beautiful women over <laughs> here that's gonna cook and clean, so you can get out of my house. And have your own woman cooking and cleaning for you. <laughs> Leave my fiance soon to be wife alone. Now, here's the thing. I need your help because I got a lot of gringos. And gringos have a way of going down to places and thinking they own the place. And what I want them to do is understand that there's a way in which you have to act. Dominicans are very tolerant. They are very humorous. Uh, they, they're fun loving. But there's sometimes you can cross the line and you can go too far. 
what are things that you've heard of that Americans, they do, you just go too far. It could be Canadian, whoever. It's like just, this is a no-no in the Dominican Republic. Don't do this. What, what advice do you give them? What lines should they not cross? Go ahead. I will say, first of all, respect. Respect for our culture, for mm -hmm. our language, for our, the way we live. Uh, and also respect in the sense of not generalizing because mm -hmm. not all Dominican, for example, not all Dominican women are ignorant or, you know, want to take advantage. So I think it all begins with respect, uh, with uh, not trying to uh, exploit, you know, because I, I've seen in some occasions, especially in terms of labor, mm. uh, that some foreigners, I wouldn't say any specific nationality, but they think that because they come, we owe them, we have to bow to them. Mm. And and they try to abuse in terms of, you know, pay or Germany. Hard, hard I'm sorry, that, that, Germany. I'm sorry. <laughs> I say that. My bad. Germans. So, <laughs> well, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. My so bad. I think, you know, and I have had cases where they say, "Oh, you know, your fees are like too much," and I say, "Look." You know, it took me eight years of university to know what I know. So right. you either you go somewhere else where they're going to fool you because they they will take advantage of you or you pay what it, it is and mm -hmm. you get a full service. So yeah. I think respect in, in terms of that, of labor, respect to the women also, because mm -hmm. women will treat you the same the way you treat them. If you treat them with no respect, they will abuse you as well. And a way of abuse is not only you know hitting each other but it's it's mostly disrespect mm. a way of abuse is taking advantage of you if you respect a, a woman she will respect you back in terms of labor i've seen that also much abuse like making them more, making us work harder hours or trying mm. to underpay and that's not fair that's that is not i want to you know so let's kind of i want to because i know you this is i want to i want to appreciate your time you can send me a bill. But uh, <laughs> the, the thing is, I want to talk about, I got some real legal questions for you. Uh, and I, I know you've dealt with some nightmare situations. Just I remember a conversation you had with me about two or three years ago about that guy who went down there with a million dollars. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. <laughs> if you don't mind, just, just tell, I'm going to get my question to you. Just tell them about the guy who went down there with a million dollars. And, 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 <laughs> and this, this is what I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's, and it's because the the subject of the conversation is the same. It hasn't changed. Yeah. There were women who were really afraid to leave their husbands in Dominican Republic alone uh -huh. because uh -huh. they say if they find a Dominican, they'll be gone. Oh, that yeah. Was the... oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I told you about that anecdote, anecdote. This person, this friend of mine, he came from Europe and he said, I have a million dollars. I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to build a house. And I'm going to retire forever. But mm -hmm. what he didn't think is that, you know, if money, if you don't invest the money well, the money ends. So he yeah. went, he built a house, a huge house in a beautiful place, but he spent the money disappeared. He did this because he, he just, you know, live la vida loca, like they say. <laughs> <laughs> too many fine women. That's what happened. I'm telling you, I know, I know it has happened to me a couple of times too. That's why I'm safe. I got my own. She keeps me safe. My, I tell her like I said, baby, I ain't never, I ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna stay right here with you. She <laughs> keeps me safe. A good woman will keep you safe. I got a lot of guys. So yeah, man, I got one over here, and I'm gonna have me a, like, man, that's too much headache. I can't. I can only deal with one Dominican woman. I'm just telling you that it's, just, <laughs> it's too much already. It's too much. But uh, I want to ask you some questions, some legal questions, kind of serious stuff. We got a lot of black men who. Uh, we, we have done very well, black American men. We went from the 1960s, we went from having uh, a 60% poverty rate. And now 64% of black men are in the middle class, they are rich, or, or they're upper middle class, or they're rich. That's the majority of us. Here's another thing, Janet, 51% of black men don't have children and they're not married. And they're not reproducing, which means if they don't get married, they, if they, we're going to die off. And that's why these guys are flying overseas. Here's another thing. And I know you see the TV, you see CNN, you see Fox, you see 
how you can imagine how difficult it is to be a black man in America because the police and the issues that we have with racism. So they're looking for other places to go. Not, they're not all going to be as lucky as me and to be able to get a, a, a fiance, soon to be wife, who is, who, is, who is now a Dominican citizen, thank to you. And they'll be able to say, hey, you know what? Now I'm a Dominican citizen. I'm going to go over here. Now, I've been to the DR, and I know I've seen people who just overstayed their visa, and they just stay in there. They just are staying there. They, they're not citizens. They just like, they're legal immigrants. They go to the Dominican Republic, and they're illegal immigrants. Y'all should, should build a wall and send them back. Okay, <laughs> that's what I but Never mind. How does an American citizen, how does one of these black guys, if he chose, become a citizen of the Dominican Republic? What are the ways in which they can do that legally? Well, they call yeah, up Daniel sure. Garcia. Hello, <laughs> Abogada Garcia. Bam. What do they need to do? First of all, the first step is before becoming a citizen is becoming a resident. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you need to obtain a Dominican visa. Mm -hmm. There are different ways to obtain the visa and, and therefore to get the residence. Uh, one of the easiest way is that people, for example, who are vets or want to retire, who are uh, renters, they live renters. The renters have investment or let's say um, income that generates at least $1,500 per month mm -hmm. or a red fee with the same amount. So um, that's one of the to get the Dominican visa or residency, but their Dominican residency now has to be for a specific reason. Either you are a renter with investment, you are a, a retiree, or you retire and you have your social security or your pension. Uh, oh, or, wow. Or you can uh, marry a Dominican, which is another way as well. Or you, ha you are an investor. And you have to be very careful about the investor visa because some people think that if they buy a property in the Dominican Republic, they are an investor. No, mm -hmm. that's not considered an investment. An investment is a foreign, uh, a foreign investment of at least two hundred thousand dollars in a company mm -hmm. or a business, so you have to show. So it's a high-end visa. It's like a, of the equivalent of the investment visa in the United States. So you have to prove that the money is in the Dominican Republic, that you're operating a business. So okay. if you buy a property in the Dominican Republic, it's not necessarily going to give you the access to the residency. All right. So let let's 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 use my business that I have there. Let's say I just put two hundred fifty thousand dollars in there. I have the bank accounts. I have the bank. We set them up together. I put the $250,000 in there. Does that count as an investment solely because it's in the bank or do I have to put it? How does it work? You, no, you have to demonstrate what is the money going for? What mm -hmm. are you investing in it? And it has to be approved by a, spe a specific institution, which is the Dominican Center for Export and Investment. So mm -hmm. that institution has to give you the green light approved. And from there on, you can get the residence and with that type of visa you can get the nationality the dominican nationality in six months wow it's a it's a really uh, you know it's a process it's a more expensive process and mm -hmm. entails a lot of work but eventually the benefit is that you can get the dominican nationality in six months well well so here's the thing i got i got friends they might have a house that's worth six hundred fifty thousand dollars. they can take a two hundred thousand dollar loan out of that house deposited it in a bank under their business name. But the first thing they need to do is know how to start a business down there. So how do they start a business down there? Is that something you handle? Yes, yes, okay. it's something that our office handles. So, so you okay. need to form a corporation. And it you handle that. You yes, handle, that. I handle okay. that, yes. So guys, a lot, of you, a lot of these guys, they don't necessarily want to get married because they're afraid to get married because they are, they're afraid that what will happen uh, here in the United States, if they get married and divorce will happen, happen there. In other words, they get married and the wife takes half their money and now they're like, darn it. So now you just heard a way. Number one, you want to be a, you want to be a resident of the DR. You go down there. How much does the property have to, how much do you have to rent and how long? For, if it's for the investor, for the rent, uh, rentista, which is like, um, some an investor, but the other type, not the two hundred thousand. Right. You need to you need to get at least fifty uh, one thousand five hundred dollars per month and prove it through bank statements. 
you know, so because that, it's, Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead, please. Oh, no, sorry. It's just to prove you need to prove that it's a consistent income coming mm -hmm. from, you know, you rent properties in the States, you invest in the stock exchange, oh. you, have, you have bonds or, you know, it's, it's like a, an income coming from that type of investment. So all they need is that all they need to have, you say $1,500 coming in every month. That's it. And they can, get right. a, they can get a rental visa. That's social security money. That's why we have, that's why there's exactly. so many older guys. There's a lot of cops and firemen who come down from New York and Philadelphia and Baltimore and move to the DR. Now I understand why they move down there on a rent visa. They got their social security check. And so they don't have to leave every 30 days. Okay. That makes sense. And then also the other way they would start a business by giving you a call. You start the business for them. Can you also get the approval from that, from that, uh, that governmental uh, agency to get them approved for the, so you can do that too. Okay. So fellas, that's two ways that you can get out of the matrix. They refer to the United States as the matrix, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, here's another question I have for you. How do you get permission to work in the DR? Do you need a work permit or something like that? How does that yes. work? Mm -hmm. There's another type of visa as well. If you are, if you are willing to use an employment visa to settle your immigration documentation in Dominican Republic, you need to be hired by a company from mm. Dominican Republic. Uh, the company has to prove that your presence is necessary for the operation of the business and there are no other locals that can, um, you know, that can uh, perform that work. So the company will write an, a contract, an agreement, and the, an inspector of the Ministry of Labor has to see, go and see um, that the, you know, that the company is formally operating, that exists, that is real. And once they provide that, you can apply for the visa. And uh, the duration of the visa is as long as the contract is valid. Right, so, so let's say I wanted to open Dennis Sperling's mango, mango shop, right? Mango, <laughs> my, my mango shop, I'm selling all kinds of mango. We got shrimp, hamburger, chicken mango. We got it all. We got octopus mango. We got it all. And um, it's under my company. So I start a company. Then I hire myself to work for the company and then I open a business. Is that something that I can do? Can I have my, if, go ahead. If you have your own company, it will be a different one. Mm -hmm. it, it will be a different type of, uh, of visa. You cannot hire your, your company cannot hire you because okay. you're, you're a shareholder of the company. Okay. Your but company I, can hire other people and, and engage them into okay. the operations of the company. So, so, but I could, let's say I wanted to come down there and be, uh, let's say I wanted to work in your office and be the paper boy, you know, I could bring the papers in and <laughs> I, if I got a job doing that, then I can get a work visa. If I'm the only one, I know all about my specialist in paper, right? So then I could apply and get that maybe it, once it's approved. Is that how that works? Okay. Right. Cool. Cool. So here's another question that I have for you. How do you get a house in the DR? There's so many issues like in many countries around the world, they'll let you rent a house, but you can't actually buy it. Can you actually buy a house as a foreign citizen? Can you buy a house in the DR? Absolutely. Yes. Really? There's no restriction. There's no restrictions to buy a house in Dominican Republic. Now, once you buy the house, do you actually own the house or do you have to like pay taxes on it every year and they'll take it back if you don't pay taxes? How does I, I mean like because here in the United States, if you don't pay those property taxes, Somebody's coming to put a sheriff sale on it and they're taking it back. How does that work in the DR? Well, of course, you you do need to pay taxes in Dominican mm -hmm. Republic. Once you buy the house, you're, you're the owner. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the property taxes are paid uh, annually or they can be paid by annually. It's usually 1% of the value of the property. Oh. Of the Not of the market value, but of the register value, which is a bit lower than the market value. So if you don't pay your taxes, your property taxes, you know, they give you many chances. It's not like mm -hmm. the IRS here. They mm -hmm. give you opportunities to negotiate. Uh, but the worst case scenario, what can happen is that they can put a lien on your property. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not as fast as here that they will repossess. You have to own like a lot of money, but they can put a lien on your property and eventually, uh, you know, prevent you from selling it. If you are going to sell it, you have to pay them first they All get right. priority so let's let's get down to the real questions i i want to talk about divorce because 
That mm -hmm. seems to scare the bejesus out of my, my uh, mm -hmm. folks here. So you marry this beautiful Dominican woman. It doesn't work out. Uh, what does the divorce look like in the Dominican in the Dominican Republic? So she decides to divorce him. He decides to divorce her. What what happens? I mean, how does the proceeding go? What does she get? What does he get? Uh, who gets custody of the children? Who gets the cars, the houses? Is there alimony? Is there child support? Tell these guys, like, explain to them what happens here. There's um, two types of divorce in Dominican Republic is the mutual consent one, which is the easygoing one where they mm -hmm. both agree on who gets what and they prepare a document in front of a notary and that's filed up to on court. That that goes easy smooth smooth because both parties agree on what is gonna happen to the with the assets, the children, and the judge only approves whatever has been agreed there. The other type of divorce is the conflict, conflictive one, which is the conflict of characters when there is a, a fight. So mm -hmm. in that, there is like a regular lawsuit. So whoever files for divorce uh, files a lawsuit against the other party. And that's when the judge decides who gets what. Normally, my advice will be, you know, to if you're getting married and to have a prenup, because when mm -hmm. you have a prenup, you it's everything is regulated there but it has to be done before the marriage takes place obviously do you have is... prenuptial agreements yes i have a notary in charge praise of that praise yes. god praise god my need I'm <laughs> holla, i need to holler at you i'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get back. i'm gonna get with you i'm gonna get with you i'm gonna call you <laughs> but uh but so you prepare prenuptial agreements are, are the prenuptial agreements do the judges normally follow them or do they say oh no i'm gonna throw this out what do they do no they have to they have to i even mm -hmm. had cases that where i have to uh, validate prenup or uh, divorces in other countries uh, that were to fight you know people from other countries that have married for example in canada mm -hmm. and they get a judgment and, uh, and they have property in dominican republic so i mm -hmm. had the opportunity to validate that divorce in dominican republic to have the properties divided in the most uh, fair way Okay. So, 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 so basically, so prenups are, still work in the Dominican Republic. So okay. a guy gets married, he finds a beautiful chica, he's 58, she's 28. They stay married for about five or 10 years and she decides she's ready to get on back out in the wilderness and she leaves him. <laughs> she's not going to be able to just leave him broke if he has a prenuptial agreement. He can get on back over there and get him another beautiful young Dominican woman. Praise, praise God. God is good. God lives in the Dominican Republic. I truly believe that. Amen. I'm not going to hold you up too much longer. I, I certainly do appreciate that. Uh, this conversation. I know my guys appreciate that. How can, how can if, if they need it? And you're, you're also based in Miami and also the Dominican Republic. How can they get in contact with you uh, to discuss their, uh, their legal issues, or maybe they want to be a resident, Maybe they want to rent an apartment. Maybe they're going to retire in a couple of years. Maybe they found this beautiful woman in the DR that they want to marry and they need a prenup. Maybe they just want citizenship. Maybe they want to start a business. Um, maybe they just want you to look over their rental agreement. Maybe they just need you to help them with some import export. How would they get in contact with you? Yes, they can uh, get in touch with uh, through my email, which mm -hmm. is j jgarcia at garciablanco.com jgarcia at garciablanco.com okay okay and I my think... phone okay hold on I'm, I'm gonna actually put this stuff up here i i didn't know if you were gonna give it out but uh i'm gonna type this in here for these good folks to have but go ahead and give them your phone number also for business purposes 305 Oh, wait, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I don't know. I don't know. Let me. I don't know if I want to. I don't <laughs> you know. You want to put my phone. Just the yeah. email. Let's begin with the email. Yeah, let's let get it. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I know who I'm dealing with, man. I, I got some <laughs> I got some dudes right now. They believe. So you married, huh? <laughs> you want to trade them? I know who I'm dealing with. Don't do it. I'll send them to my son then, to Sebastian. He's a lawyer. Too. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to. No, nah, we don't want to <laughs> put your phone number on the internet. No, Jesus Lord. Let me put this. <laughs> I am gonna uh I'm trying to get this uh in here for you. Uh oh, there we go. I will put I'll put your email address. Correct. Because these people, 
You don't know who you're dealing with. <laughs> I know just this is the internet. This is worldwide. So that's um, that's uh, attorney uh, Jeanette Garcia's email address right there. Matter of fact, what I'll do is I'll have it scroll. What other areas of law do you practice uh, down there in, uh, or in the DR or your firm? What what areas of law do your firm practice? Is um, um, immigration, like obtaining um, Dominican residency, mm -hmm. corporate, forming corporations, mm -hmm. real estate, assisting with purchases and sale of property, mm -hmm. and um, any civil law, like, uh, you know, divorces or mm -hmm. prenups. Basically yeah. That. Okay. Now, look. One the most important question: Do you dance? Because it seemed like you lawyerly. Of course. Oh, my God, that's what I'm talking we are, about. Yeah. We're born dancing. That's when we're born. Yeah. We dance. You're born with that. So it sounds to me, fellas, like we've done so, uh, another uh, great job at dispelling myths, right? Um, they the, the the internet. These lovely ladies out here have told us that Dominican women. They need you. They want you to come down there and save them from this horrible place. This is filled with uh, tigers and lions and bears and jaguars, and they want you to come and save them. Seems to me like you probably need them to save you. That's what it seems to me. Seems to me like they live in something like a paradise, and they're enjoying their lives, and they're eating good, and they're slim, and they're healthy, and they feel good. And uh, somebody said, I was waiting for you. <laughs> They were waiting for me to put your phone on, but hell no. <laughs> no. Hell no. You know what type of late night text messages you would be getting all the time of night? These are some nasty people, too. I just want you to know. I don't, I don't want that for you. you, you but then screen and screen your emails, too. That's another thing. Jesus. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I, I, I hope we've done a good job of dispelling some myths. Let's stop being so stereotypical. Let's stop to my American friends. Black, white, whatever, uh, Hispanic, whatever. Uh, I know the Hispanic folks know better. You sh at least you should. Uh, stop being so xenophobic and racist and bigoted towards people. Let's try that. Let's 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 instead of assuming the worst, let's assuming these human beings are living in the places they're living in because they enjoy themselves, they enjoy them li their lives. Uh, they have great universities in the DR, they have great uh, the, the history, culture. I personally, myself, uh, have taken my children there. So it's not like you gotta worry about somebody, uh, you know, hitting you upside the head with an AK-47 and stealing your American Express card as soon as you get off the plane, all right? It's not like that. Um, I wanna thank you, uh, Attorney uh, Garcia. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to have you here. If y'all want to reach her, if you have serious legal business and questions to ask, you can hit her up at jgarcia at garciablanco.com. That's jgarcia at garciablanco.com. Hey, next time I, I want you to, I want to meet your son. I want to introduce my, uh, my folks to your son. I, 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 I remember when he was in law school, you were telling me about it. You were all so excited and proud. And uh, so I definitely look forward to, you know, uh, meeting him and, and, and I wish him well in your career. And his, you got a daughter-in-law. There's a y'all got the power family going on. Y'all got a yes. Uh, yeah, somebody, yeah, somebody's gonna end up being the president of the Dominican Republic in your family. Uh, congratulations on that. But uh, thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we go? Let you go, and I'm gonna talk to these guys for a little. while. Anything else you'd like to add? Anything else you want to tell them? I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to uh, breaking up the myths. Yeah. And I hope that I, my conversation with you have, has helped to clarify some uh, doubts and um, just, you know, keep in your mind that everywhere we have beautiful people in Dominican Republic, we, have, we are open arms and uh, we welcome everyone and we are very, very um, charming people, ready mm -hmm. to work, ready to give our best. And uh, we are the best island in the Caribbean, not e even in the world, maybe. <laughs> now, now I got I'm one proud more. to be. Yeah, 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 go ahead, get it on out, get it on. You say you proud of what? Go ahead. I'm proud to be Dominican. Sometimes with my accent, they ask me, where are you from? Are you Latino? And like, I'm so proud. I'm proudly <laughs> Dominican. <laughs> Dominican now, you know, I, I got one more thing and I'm, I'm being a little messy because I'm a little petty. 
some of these American women said they're going to come to the Dominican Republic and take all of the men from y'all. They're going to take all the Dominican men. Let me let you see this video real quick. I could go to Brazil and do the same goddamn thing. You feel what I'm saying? I would blend in. You feel what I mean? It wouldn't be no, ooh, where is she from? No, I would be in Brazil. You know what I'm saying? Hey, boo boo. Oh. Portuguese, you know what I'm saying, bitch? Get on somewhere with this shit. Y'all gonna be mad because we about to cock block on y'all asses. Y'all passport broke. I get it, I get it, I get it. Y'all thought y'all was gonna be going down to Brazil. You thought you was gonna be in the Dominican Republic. Taking these pictures, trying to throw it in our face about how fine their women are. Excuse me, sir. We know they fine. We seen their men. Now you really about to be mad. You and the bitch will be mad. Cause guess what the black American woman is gonna do? Bitch, fuck them. We about to take you nigga. <laughs> Come on, boo boo. You wanna go back to America? Fuck them. Keep them, yeah. So guess what? We'll do a trade. We will do a trade. Y'all will be mad as a bitch. Y'all will be mad as a bitch. Your, your face says everything. I'm gonna just let it, leave it at that. <laughs> Now, just and just for just for, for clarification, is it the Dominican Republican or is it Dominican Republic? Because she seemed she said it's the Dominican Republican. What's the answer? What's the because uh, you know what? She clearly hasn't been there. It's Dominican Republic. There it is. Praise Moses. Thank you so much, Senora. I appreciate your class and dignity. Thank you. You have been wonderful as always. I'm going to go ahead and let you go. We're going to run another commercial. We're going to ease on up out of here. We'll be right back. Thank you so much. Y'all make sure y'all hit, if you if you have serious business, <laughs> you serious business, don't tell them I sent you if you're down there with foolishness and, and, and blood cut and, and effery, okay? Matter of fact, I'm going to put, let's put Jesus on this as we go out. Praise God. Lord Jesus, we want to make sure we're going to bring up, you got your sister island down there, Jamaica, which sits between Cuba and Dominican Republic. We, we have a lot of friends there. And they send us these messages from the Lord. We're gonna see you later, but you check this out as we leave. Under the blood, me send me under the blood. Jesus cover me under the blood. Under the blood, me send me under the blood. Jesus, you been cover me under the blood. In the morning when me wake up, and the blood that Jesus me take up. And when me feel like me, I go break up. Put the blood on me face just like a makeup. In the morning when me wake up. And the blood that Jesus me take up yeah. And when me feel like me heart break up Put the blood on me face just like a makeup Under the blood Under the blood Under the blood Jesus cover me Under the blood Jesus you be cover me Under the blood Under the blood Under the blood Under the blood Yeah big shout out to Attorney Jeanette Garcia Thank you so much man <laughs> I had a good time with her and she's just a wonderful, brilliant, brilliant and great representative for the Dominican Republic. I want to thank her. You guys, if y'all make, if y'all have serious business, you can contact attorney Jay Garcia at GarciaBlanco.com. Y'all hit her up. Now look, what we're going to do now, I'm not going to, I, 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 she's going to go and she got some legal briefs to write. She probably got court to go to in the morning and whatnot. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave her alone. I'm going to open up the chat room. I'm open. I'm going to let you guys come in. You can talk to me for a little while. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll chop it up for a minute, man. I mean, did we dispel some myths tonight? Did we did we get rid of some myths? You know, y'all keep trying. Y'all, I mean, you know, they, they keep. I stop if they stop. You know what I'm saying? But they don't seem to want to stop. You keep want to, you know, with the xenophobia and the disrespect, you know, you should let people speak. Let's, we believe in the truth on this page. But either way, the link is in the chat room. Y'all make sure y'all come through. If you got something to say, uh, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Did you learn something? Did you pick up something? I mean, we like giving out real information on this page. Um, that's what I like to do. But uh, either way, the link is in the chat room. Y'all come.
She said she want to take some photos in her new bikini. So I don't mind being a photographer. But go ahead. Take care of photos, mommy. Okay, no problem. Yo estoy listo, yo magnífico, yo similar de fotográfico profesional. Sí, sí, yo estoy listo. Ahora, ok. I gotta turn this off and take some pictures. ¿Tú listo, mami? Ay, wow, huepa. Mami, ¿qué es lo que? Guau, guau, guau. Ay, tengo vida. Mami, ¿tú te gusta mi.? ¿Cómo es este? Sí. Sí. Mucho. Okay. Hace calor aquí. Tú no me das eso. Mucho calor. Okay. Yo me gusta. Yo no quiero regresar a Estados Unidos. Muy frío allá. Quiero ir a Colombia conmigo. Muy frío, pero muy, es muy bien para comprar ropa y otra cosa. Hey, we are back, man. Let me tell you something. When I, I did know the bullpen is filled up tremendously, man. Let me let me take a little opportunity to say what's up to all the people who contribute to the super chat. Kevin C. I mean, we got so many in here, man. They they were just coming. Thank you guys so much. Did you learn something, man? Did you learn something? I hope you did. I am not here. Uh just to, to, to I'm here to try to help you brothers find other avenues. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just here to present you with your opportunities because I want you men to have peace of mind and happiness. That's it. But uh, either way, man, we got some of my favorites up in here. Let me get these two cats up in here first, man. These are long time. We got my, my, my Jamaican friend. We got some more brothers. Everybody is in here. Y'all deep. I didn't have to wait or nothing. Look, what did you see something that you like? I mean, Y'all was waiting for me to get her to pass out that phone number, huh? I know. We want you to put it in writing. But uh man, Devin, it's always good to have you up in here, bro. What are you what are your thoughts, man? I'm I'm trying to, you know, it, it make it, it, we gotta give, we can't just be, you know, fighting back against these lovely ladies. We gotta get these brothers avenues. You see how beautiful these women are. They're oh, all man. of African descent. Yeah. Beautiful oh, and man. intelligent and educated yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 and totally orientated toward love and family and supporting their man, man. Yeah, man. You know, and, and, I, I, was and, thinking, I was thinking we ought to swing by the Dominican Democrat before we go to the Dominican Republican. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. Yeah, old girl was uh, no comment. But, man, the, the thing is, man, um, you know, um, like Alvin, bro, like that's what's available. Mm -hmm. for you. That's what's out there for you. Oh yeah. You know, you, you, you don't have to settle for this. Like I, I start, you know, I, I say stuff in a jovial manner, uh, especially when I'm, you know, just having a good time and I'm loose. But uh, I really was, I thought the American dream was to grow up, get a job, you know, buy an expensive German car, uh, get you a fine woman with a weave and, a house somewhere, a condo, and then just wait around until you die. Have a couple of kids that don't appreciate you, then wait around till you die. You see what I mean? But here, right off the coast, not two hours off the coast of, of Miami, they got this beautiful island filled with these beautiful women who will cook and clean for you and who will be gorgeous, who take pride. And this is the other thing she didn't tell you about, how, how, how well they treat their children. You see what I mean? I've I, I've never seen a, a, a Dominican child that was hungry, that didn't look good, didn't look like they was you know lotioned up and hair braided. I mean I love that man. You gotta love women like that. And then when you get a dynamic person like uh, Attorney Janet, she's a lawyer. Her husband's a lawyer. Her son's a lawyer. Her son's wife is a lawyer. Wow. Man, hardworking, beautiful, and she cooks and cleans. You understand me, bro? That's the win, bro. What do you want to add to this, uh, Alvin? It's on you. First of all, thank you so much for all the work that you're doing. Can you hear me okay? 
Yes, sir. Thank you, Greg. You know, the last couple of days, you know, you've added so much to the space. So I, I want to just give you your flowers when I can. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for doing the work. And all the heavy, heavy lifting. Time. Thank yes, you sir. so much. Um, is this been that was a really uh not great conversation to listen to? Are you it was, oh, yeah, you it was a great conversation. It was a great conversation to listen to. It was, you know, it's, it was easy on the ears. It was nice to hear you guys going back and forth. It was great to get so much uh, information, you know, uh, about, you know, us being able to that, that those kind of opportunities are just right across the way, not, yeah. not very far away. And, and to be able to, 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 to start to um, put some strategies together, uh, you know what, maybe I can get over there and, 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 and start a business up and, 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 and do something because again, I, you know, all this talk about the kind of the trafficking that they're talking about, we're doing is not like the guys like us are looking for, for viable families, viable opportunities, viable, mm -hmm. you know, things for us to do. So thank you so much uh, for, for doing the, a, a lot of the heavy lifting and then the legwork for you. And I'll, I'll go ahead and lay my plan playing there. Cool, man. I appreciate it. what they didn't, what she didn't tell you, what we didn't talk about is how much access you have to the other countries in South America, especially when you land somewhere like uh, um, uh, the capital city, Santo Domingo, they got direct flights to Spain. They got direct flights Ooh. to Bogota. They got direct flights to Rio de Janeiro. Uh, Avianca Airlines will take you to the direct, directly to pretty much every capital city in uh, in South America, Central America, and Mexico. Mm -hmm. So it's like, man, and it's very inexpensive. And I love. I don't know if you guys have flown Avian Avianca. Beautiful planes, real nice. They still serve food. It's is is dope. You see what I'm saying? Uh, King Barracuda, man, thank you so much, brother. It's always good to have you here. What would you like to add to the conversation? Oh, uh, it was nice, and you know, about the hospitality and what you just said about the kids being taken care of, mm -hmm. and her talking about uh, the the whole breakdown situation. That that was it's nice to know that, and also the prenup situation. I think that's <laughs> that it's nice that she believes in it and that they that their judges honor it. So yeah. that's great. Um, and, and, and here's what I want you guys to understand as men. If you marry a woman and your old ass is like 35, 40, 55, 60 years old, and then you marry her ass and you give her two or three kids and you met her ass at 22 and now she's 32 or 42 or whatever, you, you can't leave her high and dry, bro. I mean, let's just be men about the situation. Yeah. You done snatched up her youth. You see what I'm saying? And she done spent her youth with you and invested in you. You can't just leave her broke. You understand? Now, I get it sometimes. BS happens and cheating happens. That's a different set of scenario. But if you just decide, hell, I'm ready to trade this one in for a new one, you're supposed to have to pay up. Even the, even the, it's, even the Muslims say that. Right. You know, you know how hard they go on, on, on the ladies. But so you, you can't just not lead a woman nothing. That's just not even that's not even manly, especially a woman who sacrificed years of her youth uh, for you. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not totally against. I'm, I want I want reform, but I know there are some irresponsible men out there who have left. Mm -hmm. They just leave the woman, the kids, and then it's just that ain't cool either. Yeah. But uh, well, I think. But but let me uh, let me get to my man Kevin C here. We just doing a round first round up. Kevin C, man, what would you like to add to this conversation? Yeah, uh, hello to you guys uh, and uh, you too, uh, uh, Dennis. Hey, so you know, I'm glad you're bringing up you know uh, intelligent, professional. Lovely, classic, and uh, elegant, sophisticated women. Uh, because man, uh, it, it's very uh, unfortunate that we have you know uh, people in the United States, women specifically, running around saying all these dirty things about these nasty things about these women. To, so much so to the point that they feel they have to defend themselves, and uh, that's not right. We don't like it when people do it to us. Uh, and I know, uh, and they and they really shouldn't be doing it to other people. Uh, matter of fact, uh, it's black men are, it's, it's interesting because black men are so used to being insulted by everybody. We just kind of deal with it, do a little bit of clap back and just move forward. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the fact that they see that they're literally attacking women in other countries and they feel they have to defend themselves. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's a problem. So that really looks bad. And, uh, I, and I'll be honest with you. I'm really embarrassed about those videos with the twerking and the way that woman is talking and, they should be looking at that going, why are these men leaving in the first place? What are we, I what think, reasons are we giving for these guys to actually stay? Well, see what I'm doing on this page, fellas, is I'm not talking to the women, the black American women that have these things to say. I'm basically giving 
everybody in the world the reasons why we're leaving, both verbal, statistics, and they can see it for themselves. Like last night, that, that conversation that we had, that, 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 that back and forth, uh, young sister, young woman, um, Joan oh, came in from the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah. Joan came in from the Philippines and she was like, oh my God, as a woman, she was in tears, but she's like, what kind of woman does this? And that's why she said, my heart goes out to you black American men. I see what you're going through. A, a natural woman is gonna have empathy for men who have had to endure so much. These are the type of women you guys have to deal with. I see why you're leaving. Come on over here and let us take care of you. You know, and, and so, yeah, man. And yeah, it is embarrassing, but all these women, all black American women did was prove to the world what we've been saying for the past 60 years. So, you know, now the cat's out of the bag. At this point, fellas, you got your options. You know that, you know what you're going to get in the DR. You, I mean, you know what you're going to get in Colombia. You know what you're going to get in the Philippines. You know what you're going to get in Thailand, Vietnam, uh, Rio de Janeiro. And now you know what you're going to get in, in, in the United States. Make your decision. It's on you. Uh, let's get this first round out the way. Cody, man, welcome to the broadcast. What would you like to add? Unmute. <laughs> Let me unmute. How's it going, Mr. Mr. Sperling? It's all good, brother. It's all good. Yeah, I want to add that uh, last night you did a great job on the show. Um, last night, too bad I couldn't make it because I was at work, unfortunately. Uh, however, uh, like you said, the cat's out of the bag and the ship has sailed. Yeah. And, you know, we can't explain anymore. We we have, we have told you what to do and you refuse. Now you have to suffer the consequences. Well, yeah, so, you know, they, they brought down, they picked fights with people that they can't win. You heard what Jones said. If y'all leave, y'all keep at it, we not going to stop. You heard right. what Jones said. As sweet as she is, she said, you keep talking about the Philippines. We're not going to stop. Oh, yeah. I'm about the Filipinos. <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 it's, not, it's not just Filipinos. It's nationalism. They love their country. They love their people. Yes. See, we don't understand that sort of love because we're in America. We appreciate America. Some of us are, uh, swore to uphold the Constitution like myself. But we don't love it like they love their country because when they look around and look at all of them look the same, they all one big family. We're divided until we have to come together to defend the United States in the military and these other different places. Uh, and, you know, I love my country, but damn, you know, you know, it's this is not a culture that you can warm up to. This is a machine. You see what I mean? I love the machine. I love it for what it does. I love it, love it for what it represents. But. At the end of the day, man, it, it, it's not warm and fuzzy. You can't curl up with it. Uh, let me go right. to my man, my man, Mad Black Ronan. What would you like to add to this conversation, bro? What's up? What's up? Um, I want, I, like I said before, I'm 100% on the side of the brothers to go find the options anywhere in the world. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Haitian, so I got my feelings about DR. But but uh, out of that, like I said, I'm on y'all side. I want y'all just to go find, be happy. If it means uh, women doing business, um, holistic, if that's there for y'all, I want y'all to go get it. I want y'all to go get uh -huh. it. But me, I ain't stepping foot in DR. Well, I mean, you know, bro, that's your option, but I'm nah, not Haitian. I'm, playing, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not Haitian. I'm Black American. That's that's a beef y'all got between DR and 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 I, I had a conversation on Fox News. That's not my fight. Nah, They've been nah. nothing but kind to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They've been good to me. Uh, I ain't had no problems. You see what I'm saying? No, no, no. I'm I'm for yeah. If long they good to y'all. I'm good, yeah. but yeah, but, you know, I, I still got my beef though. <laughs> well, you, 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 you entitled to that, you know, you entitled to that. But yeah, remember, man. you still got your own country to go back to. We don't have a country. There's no, there's no African America. Yeah, you see what I mean? You got, you can say I'm Haitian. Oh, you got a flag. We ain't got a flag. You see what I'm saying? We don't. We're not gonna. We 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 can't go back to Ghana. We're not gonna. You know, we're African people. We have African descent. So you know. Our options are not like yours. You see what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and uh, oh. you know, I always said that if 
black Americans had their own country, it would be the GDP would be one trillion dollars over one trillion dollars. Yeah, when left alone, black Americans do well. We we did well right after slavery, and we built all these towns up, and then they burned all our stuff down. Yeah. And so my thing yeah. is at this point, if why would you do something and then every time we build an institution up, look what happens to all the institutions we build up in this country. We build them oh, up, yeah. they take them over, or they tear them down, or they undermine them. Yeah, you see what I mean? And so, I, so yeah, hold on, brother. Hold on, okay, hold on, okay. hold on, hold on. And so, why would you continue doing the same thing that didn't work a hundred years ago? And so, Marcus Garvey was right. Elijah Muhammad was right. We need our own space. We need to be with our own people so that we can build and have something sustainable. You're not going to have anything sustainable here. Mm -hmm. One of the questions you, that y'all saw me ask uh, Jeanette was when you own something in the DR, do you really own it? Because here in the United States, you don't really own it. You don't pay them taxes on that house to see what happens. Mm -hmm. Mess around and, and, and get sued in the United States and, and see if they don't take your business, your house, all your trademarks and everything. We see it happen all the time. Kanye West lost how much? Like $2 billion in one weekend. You see what I mean? One and a half billion. Eminent domain. <laughs> Eminent domain that's and, and his mind in one weekend. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let me uh let me get my man uh Black Samurai in here, bro. What would you like to add to the conversation, bro? Uh, th thanks, uh, thanks for having me here, Uncle D. Um, yes, I, I like to thank I like to thank you for shedding light on on the women of DR because I was there. I, I you know I I had many trips there, four or five trips in the past five years. Um, the, you know, I, I post my vacation pictures and the American women, they say, oh, there's nothing but prostitutes down there. And I said, no, I done met doctors. I done met lawyers. I done yeah. met accountants. I done met business owners, you know, and, and the women there, you know, hold on, they, hold on. Then I'll, I want you to add this part in. Not only are they business owners and doctors and lawyers, but they also cook and take care of them. Oh, right, food. right, right. Cause, that, you know, Cause see, we got doctors and lawyers here. That's all you yeah. want. Yeah, no, I know that they cook clean and they feminine, they look good. You know, Janet is almost 50 years old, right? Now, 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 check this not even that. When I was there on vacation, yeah. they went out their way to come see me to cook mm -hmm. for me at, 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 my, at, my, at my place, and I'm like, right. I, I wasn't used to that. So, right. so, if black men, if you're going to go to these places, have respect, respect yourself, respect the culture. But to me, it was like heaven on earth, you know what I'm saying? When I was there, like, I didn't have no problems. When I yeah. was there, vacation. Most of us don't have any problems. It's hard to find problems in the DR because they they nice, they good. They mm -hmm. not. It's not like that, you know. They're not looking for beef. They they happy you there. You know, you come spend money, eat the food. You know, it's it's all good. The one thing you see they don't like is when the Americans come, not just the Americans, but the, the Europeans, Canadians, Americans, mm -hmm. and build these high rises and right. Just they don't want that sort of progress. See, they they call, they call them gringos, and I, even the, even the American blacks, they call American blacks gringos. I, it's to me, you know, I, I blended in until I started speaking American. Then I'm like, oh, you're an American. But mm -hmm. to me, like you know, I went. I, I told I told one of my friends there. She she didn't want me to leave. She was like, oh, you can stay with me. And I'm like, I told her no. As a man, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna move here, I'm gonna start a business. I'm gonna make money. If I'm gonna move here, I'm gonna have a plan. So, I probably would have just moved. Dog. All right, right, right. <laughs> but I have, <laughs> I, a family, just, I have a family to look for. Yeah, I have I a family probably, to take yeah, care of. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, man, shout out to you. Let's get right, my man D Gann in there. I ain't seen D in here in a minute, man. D, what's happening, brother? Always good to have you here. What's up? Talk to me, man. What's uh, up, we, brother? We, we trying to dispel myths out here. Mm -hmm. You two, three. We trying to, I'm trying to clear the LZ, as they say in the military. I So, so you brothers, y'all got a, a land. Y'all can drop that helicopter down there. And be smooth. Land. I'm trying to give you ammunition. I'm giving you bricks. I'm giving you bats. I just talked to a lawyer from the DR. Mm -hmm. I said she was beautiful. She was fit. And you know what she said? She puts, she cooks and cleans and every night. And mm -hmm. she's a lawyer. So, you know, you don't have an excuse. And this, it might, you understand what I'm saying? So, right. you know, I'm giving y'all ammunition, man. I hope y'all appreciate that. Hit the number one button if you appreciate these bricks <laughs> and bats I'm passing out over here on. Yes, the filter. But go ahead, brother Gant. What would you like to add? 
No, man, I, I just appreciate you for having this platform, brother, you know, and shout out to all the men on the panel. Yeah. But I uh, just appreciate you for having this platform and exposing uh, real femininity, you know what I mean? Because yeah. it seems like that stuff is missing in America these days. It's like the quality of a sit down to have a conversation with a feminine woman and she's actually listening and attentive, you know what I mean? That is gone. And so, you know, a lot of times it just I think it leaves brothers just desperate and hungry to to see if it even exists. And so uh, I just thank God for you even showing a platform where you can see that it does exist and brothers have options and brothers just got to expose themselves to the options so they can taste a piece of that sweet pie. You know what I'm saying? Man, do you see how that during that whole hour conversation that I had with attorney Garcia, she never interrupted me one time. Right. She right. never tried to talk over me. Right. You know, that even where she had an opinion that she had to add and correct me, it was it was so smooth. It was never even disrespectful. You notice that when I was wrong on a couple yes. of points. Even when you in a, even when you interjected sometimes, and she still yeah. was just so nice and sweet yeah. that it didn't yeah. even move, it didn't even move her. You yeah. feel me? She just let you go on, then she was like, Oh, okay, I'll go. You know right. what I'm saying? Just that right. femininity that yeah. we all crave as men. Yeah. That will make us go through the wall for our woman. But you feel me? That's just missing in America. And men need to get up, get their passports and get up out of here and see what's out here for sure. Yeah. And even at the last, the little, the, the chick with the, Dominic, the Dominican Republic lady, <laughs> she was her face. It was like, <laughs> that's, that's called reserve. You see what I mean? Like it was, she she wasn't going to sink herself to say, ah, oh, that bitch don't know what the fuck she talks. She didn't do that. She just said, nah. You, so, so this is a, this is what black men are looking for, man. Mm -hmm. and, um, a lot of these women don't get it. They don't get it. They never gonna get it because they wasn't raised with it. Um, but anyway, the floor is open, fellas. Uh, we could talk about anything we talked about this week. Um, um, whatever y'all want. I know y'all had a lot to say last night. I don't know if Alvin covered it on this after stream. Alvin, I think you sent me a video. I couldn't download it. Maybe you can send it to me another way. Uh, but what what did y'all so far this week, man? Is we 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 running into the last day uh, tomorrow, and I got a big surprise for y'all tomorrow, man. We going back to the motherland deep, so y'all y'all tune in for that. But uh, what what what's 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 hit you the most this week, man? Like what what was the moving moment for you, if you don't mind? Come over here, young man. Let me talk to you for a minute. Come here, brother. Come on over here. Say what's up to the fella. Look, look at this is my hard fighting fifteen year old right here, man. He, he, he say what's up to the guys. This is Dennis Dennis Amon Ross Sperling. And Yo, what up, Dennis Junior? What's up, man? What's up? He ain't here. Is he the, the brother? Tell him. Junior. Is he the one who counted the takedown? Yeah, this is this is him. This daddy's big boy. Come on, Yo, over here. You, you, you counted. Come on, you're a bad you're a bad man, man. I've seen some of your videos. You're a bad man. <laughs> Oh yeah, he he's a tough, he's a smart boy. He's in the, he's in the advanced engineering program right now there at his go. high school, and uh, he wants to go to law school. What tell him what university you going TSU. to? Texas Southern University. So we are gonna keep it HBCU. I do my best. He, it's gonna be some pretty black girls there for you to talk to. One of them will get you. One of them will get you. Then you'll be able to talk to daddy. I said, I told your ass. I told your ass. Talk to your ass down to the DR. You want to get one of the big booty black girls from Third Ward? That's what happened to your ass. That's what happened to your ass. They were crying because you done broke your gut. Just kidding. I'm all about to get get the goddamn pack your bags. We're gonna go down to Rio, boy. You need to you need to get the off. He had to walk away. He had to walk yeah, away. That's black my six. That's, my boy, black six. <laughs> that's, my, that's daddy's back. Did you have a good come come on back? Well, I'm sorry. He's so he's not like me. Okay. He is very mathematical and jokes. He don't really tell the people how you feel about when you go to the beach. Come on over here, young brother. Tell him take a knee. All right, his daddy's big boy. His daddy's handsome. Got that. Are you saying New Orleans? You look just he like your Paul. You know the funny thing is I can't fit none of this. <laughs> he, he rolling around. With Versace, robe. <laughs> Versace robe. Yeah, he fifteen year old with a Versace robe. But uh, yeah. tell him, tell him, tell him well, your experiences in the DR Dominican Republic. Tell him what you like about it the most, man. Or whatever, like from a young man's perspective. You've been going there since. Wow, when was the first time we went? 2014. So you've been going there for nine years, pretty much every year. What do you think? Tell them about it. 
Speak up into the mic. You do a lot of karate there. Huh? Mm-hmm. You don't really like doing all that. It's not really a vacation. It's not. It's not. You fight people. Your daddy make you fight every day. Huh? Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> You, you'll appreciate it later, young man. Trust you'll me. You'll appreciate. Trust me. You yeah, will. You'll appreciate it later, young man. You'll appreciate right now. The train sucks. In your regular life, you're gonna bump into people and realize how soft they are. He, 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 like they didn't want to go back to the DR. I said, why, Daddy? We don't really vacation. I said, you go to the beach. Yeah, but every day we have to go to Jujitsu and then Shotokan, and it's always something hard to do down there, huh? It's something hard. You got a itinerary. But it's good people, though. You know, Umberto's birthday is today. Oh. Senor Umberto is my taxi driver. He's been driving me around for you. He's like family. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying, man? But the people, they nice to you. You make friends down there, right? Speak up. Yeah. Use your voice. Yes. Remember that we did the jujitsu, uh, the judo. Those kids were nice. He didn't really like the Shotokan kids. He had to fight them. But the judo kids, he liked them. Good people. So what do you think? I, I'm gonna just ask you a question. As a f- young man, 15 years old, what do you think when you hear American people saying that people in the Dominican Republic, and you've been to Colombia, you've been to Belize, um, uh, Puerto Rico, you've been there. What do you think when they say that people in the Dominican Republic are ignorant? They have no education. What else they say? They uh, they're walking around there barefoot. They're hungry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell us like some of the favorite things that you do, the things you like to do there on there. Fun stuff, like maybe golf carts and dog. Uh, Go ahead. We, we did, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. And uh also went to the museum in Santa Domingo. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Was that Santa Domingo? No, that no. We we flew from Santo Domingo. Uh, the one where the guy that can't like, show us the samurai in 2019. So you the slave museum. Mm-hmm. I took my boys to the slave museum in the Dominican Republic, and uh, they say they can't hear you. Okay, he, he's soft spoken. He's not a loud young man. He's very, very reserved. He's he's not a, a loud Roman's loud. Roman talks loud, huh? But uh, Dennis is very reserved. He's talking about we I took him to the slave museum in Santo Domingo and we went through the slave quarters where they and, and so, you know, because I, I let I like my boys to know the history. And uh, that's where slavery started in the New World. You see what I mean? That's where the first slaves were brought. And so I took him there so they could see that. What do you think about the food in the DR? Uh, like you eat a lot of mango. A lot of mango, baby. It's a lot of plantain. I'm going to let you go, brother. I know you got stuff to do. God bless you. I love you. Thank you so much. It's proud. Keep being I a bad of, man. Keep being yeah, a bad I, I, man. I want I want my sons to be able to stand up and and have res, the respect of other men. You see what I mean? And that's why I raise them like that. You know, smart, intelligent, hardworking, spiritually sound, uh, physically fit, so that other men will respect them. So they'll be a good representat- representative, not just of me, but of all black men and of all American men. You understand? So my son actually speaks Spanish. He speaks a little Spanish. He understands it, but we working on it. But uh, I'm gonna let you go, son. Thank Good you night. so much. Good night, son. I love Good you. Night. All right, buddy. You know, if I ease on up. Shout out to the champ is here. <laughs> Keep up those. Hey, sure. Get your ass in bed. That's what you need to do. Go to. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding, son. Oh man, shout out. I appreciate y'all that moment of levity there. But uh. I take my sons down there. I ain't taking my sons to some dangerous places, ignorant and shit like that. These people don't know what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but anyway, man, I don't know. The floor is open for y'all. I, I, I interrupted the conversation. I'm sorry. What else? What else this week kind of hit y'all? Like, you know, unmute um, yourself, man. Talk to him. Yeah. Well, yeah uh, for me, well, it was the uh, this week was, um, I don't know if you saw Biden. Uh, no, I'm talking about on this oh, broadcast oh, okay. that we've had okay. here. What, 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 on the, as far as the broadcast, uh, Devin, what, what stood out the most to you? The the the, the pussy stank video. Uh, <laughs> Devin, don't get all of them started. Don't get all of them started. 
<laughs> I had to stay oh, out there. Like, 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 bro, look at that dude to just take it right down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, did a, did, I, I did a live, Dennis. I did a live, and I can't lie. I probably played it like six or seven times. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> How many of y'all have taken that and screen recorded and just put it on your phone and listened to it? I already knew y'all was gonna do that, man. Oh, that, man. Oh, man. oh my god. I got that saved. I got that saved my laptop Ke- right now. Keen is so upset with me. He's so disappointed in me. Every time I played it, he 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 would he would just shake his head and he and he would and he would take his face off the screen. Oh man. Yeah, hey, you know, because look, we begin to a point. It's a great point, and then he just plays out of nowhere. Like, <laughs> yeah, hey, um, yeah, well, it's there, it's there for the world to see. You just got to explain the context, man. I mean, some series, though. Kevin, see, you seem like a serious brother. What did you take from this this week's conversations about uh, the attack on the passport bros and the response by these lovely ladies? And uh, I mean, what 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 did you? What was the most? What is something you could say? Yeah, I learned something new that I didn't well, know, or Go ahead, brother. Yeah, I already I already knew uh, because you know I've, I've traveled around myself to you know mostly in Central and South America, some parts of Asia, and then even parts of Europe. Mm-hmm. But the thing was is that the fact that you were able to you know bring on uh, women who actually you know debunked all of those negative stereotypes that's a you know a, a good move. And then on top of that, uh, what I saw with that video with uh, I think her name was Ivory or Ivy, uh, mm-hmm. where she was talking about how her situation, the three husbands, the kids, and all that other stuff. You know, basically, when you see that, and she was asking black men to come back, and I'm like, and what what she's realizing, what other women should be realizing is that, you know, we're at a tipping point, yeah, and to the point where you know, if, if you, now you're asking for men to come back, the men that you didn't, that you you know shunned the whole time, you know, forty plus mm-hmm. years or so, and now you know you're, you're asking them to come back to the three kids that you had with somebody else, mm-hmm. uh, you know, except all of the mess that you made while you you know you you destroyed them in the process, and um, and you were very blunt. And uh, very matter of fact, and say, hey, look, no, we're not taking that deal. It's not a good deal. And uh, you know, and 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 shout out to black men for saying no, no to being stepfathers, no to you know, uh, voting Democrat, no to uh, you know, uh, taking on women who are promiscuous, no to obese women, no to women who who have you know toxic personalities. Like the the answer should be no to pretty much anything that's that works against you. And and black men need to hold the line on this, and we need to be firm because yeah. you know we're at a tipping point and. In order to get the correction, then you know we're gonna have to just hold the line on this, to just see how it plays out. And if you got to go someplace else, then you got to go someplace else. You know, and the other thing too is I'm a guy to go. So I live overseas, but I go back and forth to mm-hmm. the United States on a regular basis. And I got the last kid to actually graduate when she mm. graduates college. When she graduates Woo! college, then we'll be living uh, back and forth. We'll be you know probably in the United States more than we are overseas. All of that mm-hmm. being said, is that and the other thing too is I have a son. See, one of the reasons I kind of started to come in and listen to this and getting more information is that I was I started looking around and seeing the prospects that were available for my son. I'm, you know, and I'm telling him, look, it's easier, it's easier at this point to tell him what women not to avoid versus what to look for. Like, wow. you know, just go down the list. Uh, no obese women, no women with kids, no women with you know promiscuous, no women with you know with toxic personalities, no women with debt. Like it's a whole list of things that oh. disqualifying women. And the thing about it is, is that yeah. It should be on, you know, when that's the majority of women, then that's a problem. You know, oh, man. a man should be able to go anywhere within a three to five block radius and find a wife. I mean, the thing is, Kevin, another thing is, but see, the thing is, Kevin, 80% of black women are obese. They add the 50% STD rate, then add the 70% out of bed shop baby mama rate. They ain't, it, he ain't, what you looking for doesn't exist in the United States like that. Here's right. another thing. The ones that's halfway cute, they getting ran through because they're all that's available. So what do you do? You know what I mean? What do you do? What do you tell you? Look, you, what do I tell? I, I spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on my sons. You understand? Like literally hundreds of thousands between the child support that I don't see, the clothes, the different training, the education, the training, uh, the martial arts training, I'm spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on my sons. Why would I, having spent a million dollars or so on my son, when he gets 18, direct him to marry one of these hood rats? Exactly. And then bring me some hood rat babies as grandchildren. Why would I do that? Right. I mean, let's just keep it 100. I'm going to introduce my son sons to places that have beautiful, fit, feminine women who are going to make their lives easier by cooking, 
and cleaning and doing that domestic work, which will motivate and motivating them so that they'll do what? Be ready to go out and fight the world for them. But see, even yeah. my, that's my son. But I know him just like he's a little, he's a young man, he's a boy. And you put him in the, in the room with the wrong woman and he fall in love with that raggedy, rotten ass bitch. Now he he liked the rest of these screw ups out here. Yeah. She didn't mess with his mind. So right. the best thing to do is say, son, no, those type of women are off limits. Let me show you what I want you to be with. Let me mm -hmm. show you. Let me take you to the DR so you see see some of these soft, okay. beautiful, yeah. feminine women. And, and and of course, you know he's not, you know, no kind of uh, messing around or nothing like that because he's still young. You know what I mean? And I monitor all that. You know the way you just the way you do that. Nigga, you got something to do every motherfucking day. I know where your ass is at. You see what I'm saying? So that's how you, and then you keep them so busy. But, but the bottom line is, fam, um, you got to show your boys the option. So it's not. It can't just be about passport, bro. If you got sons, you got to introduce your sons because the women you trying to avoid, your children just gonna bring them right back in your house. Same thing for the girls. You know what I mean? If you raise your girl to be one of these strong feminists, that's what you are gonna get. Alvin, man. And quiet up there, man. Give me some deep intellectual thoughts, and then I'm gonna run it to King. Uh, King, seriously, bro. As a, as yeah. a podcast creator, what struck you the most this week, and what you saw? The um, the uh, the the inclusion of men, fathers, brothers, uh, nephew, the every other every group of women that you brought on they just mm -hmm. had nothing but positive things to say about men everything from fathers to grandfathers it was family was a was yeah. a big big part of it and i really have a hard time trying to think back to the last time i heard a, a, our counterparts speak highly about family and or men at yeah. all and and it was and it was very clear over the course of this last week It was very easy. It, it just it, it was one of the most glaring parts of this mm -hmm. whole thing, how how our women out the women, American black women keep the men completely separate from everything that they do. And and mm -hmm. it was refreshing to hear women from the other side want and like look forward to that part of of relationships and family and, 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 and that's just something that we crave. I think we want legacy. We want families. We want those kinds of things. And, and, um, and it's good to, it was, it was good to know that those opportunities really are out there for us. Yeah. King, man, you're a Jamaican, man. You got options, bro. I mean, um, yeah. I don't know what you, who you're dating, what you're dating. No one, I mean, see, here's the, the one thing I know about our brothers who live overseas and come here they already attuned to the fact I can go to the UK, I can go back to Jamaica, I can go to Haiti. Brothers who are born and raised in the United States, we are we don't even think about that option. So like, like Keen is, a, I can get a woman from Guyana. I can get a woman from Belize. You see what I'm saying? He's already open to that option. How do I further break these walls down, uh, Keen, to these black American men to let them know, man, this is, this is really an option. This passport thing, this can really happen for it. Because remember, they ain't really been nowhere like that, bro. They might have, they living over in Atlanta. They might, you know, drive down the drive up to South Carolina every now and then. If you live in California, you go from LA to San Diego. It's like, ah, you know what I mean? You can get big. So, like, how do I convince them that, hey, this is real? How, this, this can happen. I don't, I mean, I don't know what further you could do. Well, I guess keep on bringing these ladies from different uh, different uh, countries on here and displaying. Because mm -hmm. one thing about it is I noticed is class and respect for conversation with each yeah. of these ladies. And yeah. uh, trust me, they're, we're not the only ones noticing. You have, these the past two weeks, what you've done has shut a lot of mouths. And a lot of people want to come to the table and say, hey, we want to talk now. We want to listen. Listen. Or, or let's come to the table and talk. Listen, first of all, if you want us to come to talk, you got to be quiet. And we we talk. You listen. You don't you don't say nothing now on you. If we're the leader, you listen. If you think our leadership's not wise, go the other way. That's yeah. the first step. You know, I don't, think, I, don't, I don't think it's time to talk anymore. They're not. They're I, not no, 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 I'm saying. Let me, but I, mm -hmm. but see, let me let me let me finish my my work. You understand? Yeah. Let me go ahead okay. 
and kill these motherfuckers, and then y'all can resurrect them after they've experienced the death. <laughs> I'll tell you, look, you see, they, what I'm see yeah. right now they beat down on the ground and they bleeding this, they bleeding out a little bit. <laughs> and you know, but we want to let me go ahead and down their ass. You understand? Let me go ahead and down, down and then we're gonna let them get resurrected, and then they'll they'll come back new. See, this this phoenix has to rise out of these dead ashes. They're not yeah. they haven't changed. They want you to come back to the same bullshit. And if you don't finish this task, then they'll mm -hmm. never affect you again. You going yeah, so 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 let me finish next week. <laughs> I'm still not finished with this week, but next week we're gonna Man. have all my Jamaican folks that have been contacting me, all the people from the from the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about these passport hoes and what they've been doing to these little boys down in the Caribbean. We're gonna have some people come up from, from the DR. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about what these nasty rotten whores have been doing to these underage boys paying for sex. All the rent dreads, all that, all of that's coming out next week. See, after that, mm -hmm. time you, every time you type in passport bros, passport hoes is going to pop up. It's going to yeah. be... Right. And I, talk, I, talk, yeah. I talked to my... Sorry, right? yeah, go ahead, brother. I, yeah, I talked to my... I was talking to my dad about that tonight. And because and I, I plan on... We're going to Jamaica in August, so I can't wait. But yeah, it was talking about that and how they exploit him and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, it's just, it's just, it's insane, you know. Some but of these, some of these Jamaican men and Bahamian men, they got children in the United States they don't even know about. Yeah. It's women who've traveled down there. They got children by Jamaican men and Bahamian Caribbean men. They ain't tell it. The, the kids don't know where they. They just say, your daddy ran off. Your daddy don't want. They lying. You know right. Saying? Let me take a quick break. We'll be right back. I am the Blizzard King. Now, what does that actually mean? What that means is I represent that cold shoulder that you're going to begin to feel from black men. And we see you for who you are, black woman. We see you for the hate-filled individuals that you become because of your selfishness and your waywardness and your falling away from morality and what the most high God wants for you. But let me tell you the difference between you and that white woman. That white woman stood by her man. Through 500 years of blood and guts, she stood by her man. And whether she liked it or not, she was right on board with him dominating this world. The Asian woman has been oppressed. The Asian man has been oppressed by 500 years of, of, of white male domination. So has the Native American and the Indian in India and the African and the Arab man, everybody. It's the white man's time to rule. Everybody gets a chance. Black people had 80,000 years and you sat next to the black man when he ruled. For the past 500 years, the white man is ruling. Guess what you do? Instead of being good companions and getting in line and waiting your turn again, you want to crap all over the black man, even the ones that mean you well. So ladies, you're being replaced. And here's the thing. I'm not going to be nice to you about it. See, I'm not like Kevin Samuels. He tried to do right by you. He tried to teach you. But I've realized you're going to hate me anyway. So what I'm going to do is give you a reason to hate me. So when I'm called home to my ancestors, all that you say will be justified. And I'm okay with that. I am the blizzard. Yeah, damn. Oh. <laughs> Hey, 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 yeah, man, I meant that. A shout out to the fans. The fans take my stuff, they chop it up, and they send it back. It's like, wow, you know, because I get in the zone, and sometimes all of these years of studying and reading and listening to the greats, it just comes out uh, out of my brain computer. But um, the thing is, family, I want y'all to make sure y'all go visit my stores. Y'all go buy these T-shirts. Um, just go check them out, man. Go purchase the T-shirts, 29 bucks. You got the... Your two goddamn nice passport is always an option. It's greater later. This 
prevents me from having to be up here every night, you know what I'm saying, and doing this, and I can see it coming in and justify. I could be hanging out with my children, watching a movie or something like that, you know what I mean? Like every night, instead of spending time with my sons, I'm on this computer for a couple of hours before I start and the two hours that I do. So show your support and appreciation. If you really appreciate what I'm doing, the time I'm taking away from my family, man, get some T-shirts, man. I know, uh, you know, some of y'all may not want to donate. That's cool. But at least this, you got some tangible you can work out in it. Uh, you got the passport. is always an option T-shirt right here. You got uh, some other ones in there, man. So just get the T-shirt. So I would really appreciate it. If y'all will go over to my uh, Esquire Entertainment page, uh, if you haven't been there and, and join the Esquire Entertainment page, which uh, is going to be my new outlet, um, it's going to have uh, music, it's going to have current events related to entertainment, things like that. I'm, I'm doing good. So far, I got 1,450 subscribers. But I'd like to get it more. The other thing is got plenty of good music over there, man. Go over there and check it out. It's good stuff. You got some good theme music in there. It's both in English and Spanish. You got some traditional hip-hop. You got bachata-based, samba-based music. It's dope, man. Go ahead and join that. Check it out. I appreciate it. Uh, but in the meantime, fam. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. But in the meantime, let's get back to this conversation. I Everybody is calling the hell out of me for some goddamn reason. I don't know what's up. Uh, oh, shit. Yeah, take Real quick, mediate this thing. I'll be right back. Okay. Go yeah. ahead, King. You, you know, it's uh, I was trying to say that they're trying to get us to come back to the table and talk, but once again, it's like it's like their terms. They're trying to lead and direct us, and it's it's so funny. It's like you don't know how to listen, and you have they have ideas how to, but their pride is the issue. And it's like it's too late. Somebody they're gonna have to listen. Most of them are chasing the same men, anyways. Go ahead and be with them. Right. They, they, right. You, they thought they could they could play around and have a retirement plan for suitable good men. Mm -hmm. Not working no more because you disrespect the good men that will that will step up and be a stepfather. You disrespect them. You have an infinity complex. You have infinite response. Life doesn't work that way. Now reality's hit you, and it's mm -hmm. it's a sad thing to say. I'm, I'm millennial. I see the millennials high in the in the depressions. It is what it is. Can't say if you don't want to be safe. And, and then, then they try to they, they they try to over. They don't ever say being a woman or a black woman a nice woman is enough. They'll say uh, black girl magic or mm -hmm. or we 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 are. They they always got to over amplify mm -hmm. themselves. Just be simple and be humble. Yeah, it sounds like they, I mean they, they're they're for the most part they're they're drinking their own Kool Aid. Black mm -hmm. Samurai, what, what would you like to add, bro? Um, I would because I, I would like to shed light on you know most of the females that that you know the American females that that was clowning the passport bros. Now they see the result, and I, I test the temperature on social media. I made a stat that just imagine in fifteen years you see Black Wall Street all over the world. You see. Mm -hmm feminine women you see upright upright men and respectable children yeah. now 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 that was just 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 something that I put out there and in, 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 in the passport most people that that's 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 pro passport bro they understood what I was saying but most of the people that's anti they say oh you're downing American women you're doing <laughs> this and I tell them I'm like you know they had their chance uh before I got my passport I almost married one of these American women, you know, I, I, you know, the relationship was going good. And, you know, she, she probably, she, I think she fell on hard times and, you know, she had a little drinking problem, or whatever. I was going to work with her. Uh, I remember saving my money up, saving for an engagement ring. And one night I just went to her house to surprise her. Um, I went to her house. She was pissed drunk with her family um, I guess, I guess her, her mother was indoctrinated her, which is also a single mother, indoctrinated her and said, oh, you don't need him. He, he's doing everything and you don't need a man. The, the exact first words when I came in the door, oh, I don't need you. I don't need you. Yeah. I went back to the, the jewelry place and, and I told the guy, I'm like, I, I, you know, I want my money back. And he understood. He was like, man, you, you dodged the bullet. Mm -hmm. And to me, right after that situation, I got my passport. I went to I went to the DR just to go just to get some relaxation, just to go to the beach. I wasn't even going there to meet women. The mm. women came to me. 
It mm-hmm. was crazy. You know what I'm saying? I, I had to I had to take a step back and, and realize I'm like, if you're a hardworking, respectable man, they flock to you. They like mm-hmm. re- re- hardworking, respectable man. If you're respectable and you're hardworking, they 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 won't they don't want you to leave. You're like a piece of gold. You're like a brick of gold to them. So sure. I tell men, I tell men all the time, if, if it's not working, t- try the other option. And if it's, if it works for you, don't worry about what social media says. Don't worry about what the people say because there's a lot of trolls on the internet. And and if you want to stand up on your own two feet, it, it can be hard sometimes. But you have to stay. You you have to be a man and stand up and say, well, "Hey, guys, want we, something we're uh, yeah." Fellas, we are uh, we at that we about at that time right now. We are two hours in. I got to get back to my normal format. I can't be hanging out with y'all for three hours and whatnot, man. But uh, <laughs> I appreciate the conversation. I always appreciate chopping it up with you, fellas. I think I think we're doing good work. I think that uh, as 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 Alvin pointed out, this channel of fifty five thousand people is definitely having an impact on YouTube. Uh, I actually heard somebody on another channel mention. Uh, one of the themes that we talked about. Um, and so I know it's working. And and the reason is because this page is a page, first of all, YouTube is dominated by men. And this page is dominated by men to the tune of 99% of you all are men. I don't have the fluffed up numbers of 200,000 women, you know, and 50,000 men. Mine is pure. I got that, 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 that pure old. You see what I mean? So when the message comes out here, it goes everywhere. And the thing is, I pride myself on the fact that I don't tell you guys anything I wouldn't tell my own sons. The same advice I'm giving them, like I take my sons to the DR, like, damn, he he that's why he, you know, that's love. If he do that for his children, then and he's telling us to do the same thing. And hell, he did the same thing. Might be something in there. That's some truth in there. And that's the separation between me and a lot of other YouTubers. You see my face, ain't no gimmicks. This is the only problem. I got a chair and two pictures in the back. It's it's the voice and it's the truth. And people know the truth when they, when they hear it. And when you guys come to this page, you speak the truth because you feel comfortable telling the truth. You can be honest. And I respect that. And most people with good sense respect that. So that's the work we're doing. That's why I always give... The praise, all the praise goes to the most high. And what I mean by that is it is God's wisdom and it is God's uh, divine will that we be here at this particular time having these conversations. And you imagine if we didn't have an outlet, it was 1980 or 1985 or 1992 when we just had to sit back and take it. And we couldn't reach out to people around the world and say, hey, this is our side of the story. Hey, this is this is. This is what's really going on. Y'all be frustrated. Y'all be mad. Some of y'all might be ready to start throwing bricks through windows. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I thank God for this outlet. And uh, where's my man? I heard my man Patri- Patriarchy Strikes Back. Where's he at, man? Y'all send him back over. There's my man. Come on up in here. The Patriarchy Strikes Back. Uh, he ran off, man. But I really like yes, I man. actually told him. I said, bro, this is the future. You see what I mean? And I want him to know now I was picking on you because you were strong. I was picking on you because you were right, but I have to pick on you to make you stronger. You see what I mean? And so you come fight with me and you and you hold your own. Nobody else can deal with you. That's why when you put me in these in the chat room. and you put me in these different places in these conversations, y'all see what happens, you know? And even last night with the young lady, I didn't want to go too hard on her because, you know, she's a mother. She's a black woman. She's still our sister. And I'm talking about Ivory Johnson. That's still my sister. But she needed to hear the truth. You see what mm-hmm. I mean? But that's the toughness and the compassion that you have to have when you're dealing with black American women who have been living in delusion for the past 65 years. And they've been lied to. Well, I'm sorry. Patriarchy strikes back. He, he corrected me and everybody else. They accepted that raw deal, and now they're forced to deal with it. So shout out to that young brother uh, who graduated from Howard. But uh, anyway, man, big shout out to you, Alvin. Always good to have you and Devin up in here. Devin, man, De- I knew you was going to say something wrong to you. I, that's why I got that lady up out of here. I ain't not, ma'am. Don't put your phone number. I knew. I, De- <laughs> yeah, that was the video you put up, that was the shit right there. <laughs> I knew it. I know, like, yeah, at least he's keeping it real. Shout out to Devin Lockett. 
But uh, Poe, a lot of courage, man. Man, 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 See Ken Bar Ken Barracuda next week, man. Round up everybody, bro. We're gonna have that. We're gonna have I'm gonna let the Caribbean people talk. I want these young men to talk about what they've been experiencing. That's that's on next week's itinerary. We're gonna mash the gas on them. But anyway, man, uh, I love you guys. I respect you guys. I appreciate you guys. And as always, this time it's Uncle D, and I'm up out of here. Boom. Mm -hmm.